Well everyone, something many of you have been waiting for is finally here. A revision horizon that really, really helps memory support. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Gamer Meld. Before we get started, don't forget to check out the giveaway. Just subscribe and follow the link in the description for your chance to win an RGB mechanical keyboard. So on to AMD and Ryzen. I saw it yesterday, but I was pretty tired at that point and had just done a video, so I couldn't really get another one out. Either way, AMD has given a new community update and it's a doozy. Within the update, as a few key things enthusiasts have been waiting for, most notably is more support for high RAM frequencies. Now, don't start looking for that sweet BIOS update just yet. This is concerning the new Agisa update 1.0.0.6. For those who don't know, AGISA is what AMD essentially calls their system architecture that initializes the x86 process during boot. This code is given to motherboard manufacturers to incorporate into a future BIOS update. They use it somewhat as a starting code or as AMD calls it, the nucleus of update. But each motherboard manufacturer adds on to it for their specific motherboard and components, etc. Somewhat think of it as Android's open source code before Samsung and other manufacturers add their own spice to it. Although this is firmware instead of an operating system, but the analogy is pretty close. Either way, AMD expects manufacturers to begin sending out BIOS updates with the new Agisa code mid to late June. So what does it do? Well, for one, they now support ACS, which is great for those who run virtual machines. But of course, that doesn't really help the typical user or gamer. If you want to learn more, I'll have the community update linked in the description. So this is where the RAM comes in. The new Agisa code adds 26 parameters. The first and probably biggest is memory support all the way up to 4,000 mega transfers per second. That is awesome. I had my fingers crossed for maybe 3,800, which I felt may have been a stretch, but 4,000? That's what I'm talking about. Now, just because the Ryzen platform overall supports it, please understand that unfortunately it doesn't necessarily mean your specific motherboard will. It's solely up to motherboard manufacturers as to what memory frequencies each board supports. Certain motherboards may be limited by hardware to push those frequencies, possible architecture of the chipset, etc. Now, when it comes to the maximum frequency, unfortunately, only time will tell what motherboard will and won't support it. Either way, the fact that 4000 is even on the table is fantastic. Not only that, but it also now supports 133.33 megatransfers per second intervals, while before it only supported double that. For those who don't know, that's the frequency intervals, meaning it supports a much wider range of frequencies in between the maximum and minimum frequencies. With all of that said, do keep in mind that AMD still considers anything over 2667 an overclock. This means two things. For one, even if the board supports a certain frequency, it doesn't mean it's guaranteed to go that high while maintaining stability. Second, it voids your warranty with AMD. So if you ever go above 2666 memory and your CPU dies, it's not covered. As to whether it voids your motherboard warranty, memory warranty, etc, etc, that's up to those companies. Don't let that scare you too much though. Just make sure to understand that before attempting it and ensure you know what you're doing, especially with manual memory overclocking. The second most important difference in the update is really a few different ones, but ultimately the addition of quite a few timings. I'm not really sure why most weren't really included from the start, but they're certainly here now. This should help with support for tons of new memory sets, but also, the added overclock information needed to get higher frequencies. Basically, this update is what we were promised and more. So while that ends today's video, don't forget to check me out on Patreon if you want to support the channel. It really helps me out, and also, I've officially launched the GamerMail Discord server, so check that out as well, they'll both be linked in the description. You can ask hardware questions or just relax and chat. I'll try to be on there a few times throughout each day, though of course, life sometimes gets in the way. But either way, definitely make sure to check those out. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.